It seems inevitable that anyone who passes this thing ends up making a video detailing their journey through it and how they tried harder. So here I am. My name is Kirkland Slick, and I am officially an Offensive Security Certified Professional. Now, before I begin talking about who I am and what I'm all about, I'd like to preface this by saying what I am not. I am not a professional pen tester with years of experience and insider knowledge of how the industry works. I've worked in the InfoSec field for about three years now, primarily on the defensive side, really focused on vulnerability management, but I'm not a pen tester. I don't want to give the illusion that I have all the answers and know everything about this industry. However, I am a lifelong learner and I enjoy working on difficult stuff like this. More than that, I love talking about this sort of stuff. So if I may indulge just a little bit, I'd like to talk about my journey through the OSCP, my journey inside the PWK course, and how I feel about the whole thing. So I began studying pen testing in February of 2021 with the EJPT certification by eLearn Security. At the time, the training was free, but you had to pay around $250 for the certification exam voucher. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do pen testing at all, but this seemed like a pretty low-risk way of testing the waters. After about a week of working through the material, I fell in love with the process. It was so much fun going through these modules and learning how different programs work together to root a machine and get system access. I passed the EJPT that March and immediately went for the next level of certification from eLearn Security, the ECPPT. The ECPPT was much more in-depth and was a hell of a lot more expensive. INE had just bought out ELS at this time, so you had to subscribe to their platform for like 750 some odd dollars in order to get access to the materials. But at the time, it was the most affordable pen testing certification at that level. Honestly, I would recommend maybe trying out that newfangled PNPT at that price. I've heard good things about it, but I digress. The ECPPT was often compared to the OSCP, which I knew was the big certification to get into pen testing, so that's why I ended up going for it. I passed the ECPPT in August of 2021. So, now that I had a pretty decent grasp on pen testing, I started to look at the OSCP. I'd heard people talk about the certification starting in college as the big, this is some serious stuff certification, and the reputation for the difficulty is pretty well known, even outside of security circles. That whole try harder thing really does wonders for marketing, but I'll get into that later. Anyway, I purchased the course a month later in September, and I did the 60-day lab time for $1,200. My wallet hated me after that, but I did it anyway. Now, I want to throw a little bit of extra context here, because the next year is filled with irritation and ranting. So, at the time I was studying OSCP, it was the old pre-AD environment version. Everything was a shared lab environment, all communication was done on the offsec forums, and the bonus points were absolutely not worth it. You had to do like a several hundred page lab report, and you only got five points for it. It just, in my eyes, it wasn't worth it. The whole thing was kind of dated and rough. And admittedly, I kind of breezed past everything because so much of it was overlapped with the ECPPT. I thought I could just manage it. After skimming the OSCP course PDF and doing around 15 lab machines, I sent my exam for November thinking I had it in the bag. I had to drive two hours to my girlfriend's place since I didn't have great internet at the time, and I took the exam there. I failed with 45 points out of a needed 70. I managed to get the buffer overflow machine within 30 minutes, and about three hours later I got one of the 20 point machines rooted. The next 20 hours taught me a lot. The lessons I learned from this attempt were really big for me. Number one was to take the exam somewhere you feel comfortable. You really need your own space for the exam. Number two is not to panic. After being stuck for about six hours, it was time for me to sleep. But I was in such a panic mode that my body refused to let me sleep. This made me panic more so I couldn't think logically and get through the exam. Also, I learned that it's a bad idea to dig your heels into a specific machine you're working on if you're stuck bear to swap off every couple hours. Finally, the biggest lesson for me was that I needed some automation tools. I was doing every bit of enumeration manually, and for an exam that you only have 24 hours to get through, you really need some kind of automated tool and a good way of taking notes. So I failed the first attempt. I was sad, but not surprised. I mean, the exam has a reputation of being difficult, and this was my first time with it. So I hit the books again. 
I was studying on Try Hack Me and Hack the Box at this point, and Proving Grounds, as a matter of fact. The lab extensions were just too darn expensive, so I, I, I went to some cheaper sources there. But the next month, Offset hit me with a curveball. They changed the exam format. Buffer Overflow was out, and Active Directory was in. I had done zero Active Directory hacking at this point because I knew it wasn't included in the exam in any capacity. Therefore, I skipped the Active Directory sections in the PDF. Yet another lesson learned. Do not try to metagame and outsmart the exam. Learn everything you can and try your best. So, I spent the next few months grinding primarily Active Directory hacking stuff. A bunch of try hack me rooms dedicated to it and a few hack the box ones for it. In my spare time, I was reading stuff on Active Directory hacking, and I was feeling it. However, I was in the middle of moving at the time, so I didn't dedicate myself as fully as I really should have to everything else. But, I set my exam for March 2022, and I was determined to try again on that date, even if I was only able to crack Active Directory. The day came, and it went about as well as I figured. I managed to root Active Directory, and nothing else. I wasn't shocked necessarily, but if I'm being honest, my ego was bruised. In addition to that, OSSEC was implementing changes to how course materials were accessed, as well as no longer sending out physical certifications, and increasing prices for those of us who weren't part of their subscription platform. I was burned out, pissed, and sick of it all. I couldn't even think about the exam without getting a mild panic attack. So I stopped. I took an entire year off to just stop working on OSCP and live my life for a little bit. I had just moved out of my parents' place, so I had enough on my plate without trying to kill myself for this exam. So I stopped. The failure was in the back of my mind for that entire year, though. It ate at me, and I got sick every time I thought about the exam. Here comes 2023, and OFSEC announces the PIN 200 2023, which has a dedicated lab environment streamlined course topics, and the bonus points are actually worth it now at 10 points for 30 routes and 80% on all topic exercises. Not only that, there's no several hundred page lab report required. It's all done within the new offset portal. I was in. I still felt sick thinking about the exam, but I knew if I didn't finish it, the OSCP would be looking me in the eye for the rest of my life. So I bought myself a 30 day lab extension, and took myself a week off of work in order to grind through the course to work off my rust and also to start the lab work. I managed to finish the coursework in about two weeks and counting my routes from the previous version of the course, I was able to get 30 combined routes in about a month. I was feeling really good about everything so I bought my exam voucher and scheduled it for Memorial Day weekend. In the downtime between finishing the bonus points qualification and the exam, I dialed down my grind a bit and did a handful of offset proving ground machines in the meantime. I also did a couple of write-ups on them to get a feel for report writing. I was really feeling good about my odds this time, but I kept my expectations in check. I told myself that no matter what, at least I made it so I get at least 10 points. I wouldn't make a zero. So exam day came and I started the exam at 5 p.m. I chose this time to force myself to get some sleep halfway through. I am too old and cranky to be doing all-nighters anymore. So I got in, did all the proctory stuff, and began the exam. Within four hours, I had rooted the AD domain, and by midnight, I had the points I needed to pass. I immediately got the single largest boost of adrenaline I've ever had in my entire life, and proceeded to stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning, running through the exploit process again through my notes, making sure I had all my screenshots and output that I needed. I went to sleep intending to wake up at 9, but I woke up at 7 and was ready to go. I spent all morning writing my report and triple checking everything, and by lunchtime, I had everything submitted. I got my results in the next day, which was surprisingly soon, and I was genuinely too tired to be excited. Now that I'm a little bit more well rested, I can tell you it's amazing to be done with it all. This exam was a trial and by far the most challenging certification I've ever done. The benefits should be great, though, but that's yet to be seen. So, is it worth it? Should you try to get the OSCP? Maybe. I mean, I know it has prestige and all, and it will absolutely help you get some opportunities, 
but it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. And I'm not talking about just the difficulty of the exam either. I, I have some genuine gripes for OFSEC if they're listening. Number one is the price, which is a shock to no one. OFSEC has some actual competition now, and you'd think they would try harder to get prices down to entice people. However, because they've been around so long, they're the de facto standard for pen testing certifications. Honestly, unless your company will pay your way in, I say go for the PMPT or just get a Proving Ground subscription. Number two is the portal. The move to go to a centralized location for all of the course materials and labs is objectively a good decision, and I generally like it. But it's terrible to navigate. The only thing you ever end up using to navigate to anything is this bar right here. You never end up clicking any of these things unless you were in the lab section and you only click the cards to open up the lab section and that just opens up a full list of machines. I really hope this is something that I plan to work on over time. It just, it, it really needs some cleaning up. Speaking of working on things, there is absolutely no excuse for the lab to be as unstable as it is. It seems like every week the VPN would go down or the labs would refuse to load for people. I understand they transition from one shared environment for all students to dedicated spawned VMs for each student. I think it's reasonable to expect a few quirks in the system. But when you're charging $350 a month for lab environment extensions, and they break down for five days out of those 30 days. That's insane. When you can get the exact same thing from Hack the Box for around 20 bucks a month. There's no excuse, and that needs to be Offset's main priority for improvement. One final complaint, and I'm going to wrap this whole thing up. The whole try harder thing. I wanted to wait until I passed the exam before I talked about this because I didn't want to come off as bitter about failing the exam. I understand Offsec has this whole long essay blog post to explain how try harder as a motto is about a learning mindset and improving yourself, but in my opinion, if you need a blog post to explain what your motto really means, it's a crappy motto. In my opinion, it comes off as elitist and condescending to those who are trying to break into the field. I know it's a marketing gimmick at the end of the day, but it really rubs me the wrong way. But outside of all that, the process for obtaining the OSCP was a very challenging and rewarding experience. I do think it was worth it, and I'm considering doing more offset stuff in the future. I just want them to work out a couple kinks of their system and maybe lower some prices a bit. Of course, I'm just a student who doesn't know the ins and outs of offset's business model, so, you know, take my comments with a grain of salt. Anywho, that's my experience with the OSCP and my thoughts on the process as a whole. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to my ramblings, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Next video, I'll be doing a walkthrough of a random Proving Grounds box in order to show my methodology and how I take notes throughout it. If you have specific questions or any topics you'd like me to cover in something in the future, let me know. I can't answer questions about the OSCP exam itself specifically, but I'm more than happy to talk about my resources, strategies, or just talk about hacking stuff in general. I don't know everything, but I'm willing to share what I've got. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.